I recently had the opportunity to build a rooftop deck and put it on one of my friend's school buses. Now, this has been a plan about a year and a half in the making, and it's been about that long since they asked me to actually design and put one on their bus. With a lot of brain power from a lot of different friends and a bit of help from people in the community, I think we came up with a design that really worked for them and really suited their needs. Now, because I had the opportunity to recently put one on my friend's school bus, I decided that it would probably be a pretty good idea since it is one of the top questions I get online, and it's also a pretty fun project to do to share with you how we went through our design process of building a rooftop deck and placing it on top of the school bus. Now I know when I was building my school bus, one of the most important things on my list was not necessarily the kitchen, the living space, or the sleeping. What I really wanted was a rooftop deck. And now I know that's not necessarily the most important part to a school bus or you living full time on the road, but it was something that was really important to me. And during the design process and when starting my personal deck, I started to realize how many engineering challenges, design challenges, and honestly how complicated it is to actually put a rooftop deck on top of a school bus and have it go down the highway and essentially hurricane force winds. So when we all sat down and actually started playing out exactly what we wanted to do for Little House on the Highway and what they wanted on top of their school bus, a lot of these engineering design challenges started coming in because we had to figure out how we were going to make it look on their bus, but also how we were going to make it safe for their bus. So the first thing that we did when we were starting to design this was not actually design what it was gonna look like, but try to figure out how we can use the existing structure to figure out how we were gonna attach to the bus. The attachment part is probably the biggest piece of any type of build when you're doing a deck or a rack or solar panels or anything on top of a vehicle. And we had a look at what Richard kind of already had because his bus was already built out completely and what we could work with moving forward when we're actually trying to put the deck together. There's many ways that you can do this and I have a couple of examples that my friends have actually already done and we took a look at their decks to kind of see how they did it which then can maybe help inform how we can do Richard's. For instance, my friend Dean, he built a pretty robust deck on top of his bus and that one was kind of pre-built and then kind of laid on top and bolted through the ribs of the bus which kind of gave him this nice top profile um, it was really secure because it was actually into the actual ribs of the bus and by putting these bolts through the channels of the ribs he pretty much was taking the deck and bolting it directly to the frame of the bus which made it one solid piece. Now in the case of the number one bus, my friend Will, he built a deck where it kind of slid over the bus and it had side rails that went down the side. Now this can also be a good option because he also bolted through the side channels of the bus and used the existing structure to create the strength. The only issue that I could find with a design like this is that all the weight is relying on about eight bolts that are hanging on the side of the bus, which in terms of forces, it's kind of everything's relying on those eight bolts in terms of sheer weight. And over time, I would wonder how much that would actually support. But what Will did to prevent that from happening is that the top of his deck is actually resting on the bus. So the side is not taking all of the force of the deck and it's actually resting on top of the bus, that's just simply keeping it from sliding forward and backwards. Now when it comes to my rooftop, I actually used really thick walled gas piping. And I did this because what I wanted to do is I wanted to use those cylinders and the pads to actually put them directly into plates that I welded into the roof of the bus. And then it kind of gave in this like hidden look where the poles were so far into the middle that it kind of looked like the deck was floating up there. And that was kind of the look I was going for. And the problem with that one is that I went for a design first and then I went for structure later, which made it a lot harder to find the best ways to attach it because I was more worried about the aesthetic necessarily than originally into the strength. So I kind of had to work backwards in that type of design where if you're working from the position of strength to aesthetic, it can be a lot easier sometimes to figure out how to attach it and then make it look good for the design you're looking for. Now when designing Little House on the Highway's rooftop deck, we had to use these different ideas and different things that have been done before, look at them and find the pros and cons and how we can inform the future build that we're doing on theirs. What we decided to do is use a similar design to what Dean actually did and kind of build an external frame that can be removed and put on and it's attached through bolts that go through the ribs of the bus. By doing this, we decided that it would be the easiest to put together in the situation that we had in the location we were building, but also gave us the greatest strength because we were taking the deck and we were attaching it directly to the actual structure of the bus, which gave us the safest option possible because essentially it is just one piece with the bus and we didn't have to worry about it in the future going or moving anywhere because it's just one big piece so in that case, all we really had to think through was how is this deck interacting with the wind, the driving of the bus, the bouncing of the bus, and a bunch of different factors that are actually going to affect it while moving down the road, and how over time is this thing going to stand up, and how safe is it going to be in the long term? <laughs> Cut all these off. All right, well, why don't we, uh, Looks good. We need to mark these sections. 
And that's where it came to kind of the second part of this whole process. We had to decide what type of material we were gonna use to build this because we wanted to make sure that the strength was right. What we ended up doing was we ended up going with one by two steel with a thicker wall. The reason why we did this is because we wanted to get the strength out of the dimension of the rectangle. We didn't want something that was really thin gauge so that it was gonna be an issue going down the road that as over the years people were walking and stepping and climbing on this thing, that the metal was gonna slowly start bending on the edges or flexing or anything like that. So we decided to go with one by twos and build it out of that. Now there are a lot of different options that you wanna go out there, but once again, the entire purpose and the idea of all of this is safety. So if anything, overbuild it. If anything, don't go with the smallest thing possible. You really wanna think through what your materials are using and how they're gonna stand up over time. You're essentially putting a 500 to 1,000 plus pound object on top of the school bus, and that's gonna affect the way that it drives, and it's gonna affect the way that the wind comes over the top. The bus was originally designed in a certain way to function on the road and drive and carry the suspension and the weight it was designed for, and we're now currently changing that, so we're gonna end up changing the center of gravity of the bus, we're gonna end up changing the way the wind interacts with it, which is gonna ultimately affect the driving. So what we decided to do was keep it as low profile as possible so that we would stay out of the wind as much as possible, and then keep it as close to the center of the bus as possible so so we're not overhanging, so we really want to make sure we weren't going wider than the actual original school bus body. And that's really important because when you're driving on the road, a lot of times it may look really good, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna be the safest option. So we went through a lot of different designs, we went through a lot of different things, and honestly, we took that deck up and down and up and down a million times to make sure that it fit perfectly and it was as low profile as possible so that we knew that it was gonna be exactly what we wanted. It definitely wasn't the most fun because that thing is really heavy, and we were able to get all the measurements correctly and get exactly what we were looking for. Now in order to attach the wood, we laid down a row first on top of the metal, then screwed into that wood to make for our final deck boards. It is close to how a house is built with a foundation, sill plate, and subfloor. This method limited the cost and number of bolts needed to finish the project. Now just remember the name of the game is safety, not necessarily aesthetic or use. Now I know it's a lot of fun and I designed my deck because I specifically wanted to be able to sit on it and overlook amazing locations and take beautiful photos and just enjoy beautiful sunsets. But if I can't get to those locations safely, there's no point. So at the end of the day, safety is our biggest concern and that's why we wanna think through the designs and what we're doing and make sure that this is gonna last a test of time. Now with safety as our main priority, another priority is gonna be maintenance. Once you build this and you're going down the road and getting consistent hurricane force winds down the highway, you wanna keep looking at it. Make sure your deck boards are actually secure. Make sure the bolts are still tight. Make sure that every time you turn on that bus and drive down the road, it is the safest possible. And if any maintenance is needed, you can do it before a problem occurs. So once again, just remember safety is the name of the game and at the end of the day We're all looking to enjoy that beautiful sunset from the top of our roof And I hope that you go out there and design some pretty awesome things with safety in mind So I hope this video was helpful and I'll see you next time